Hi, Frank Turner here. Just a quick word about the threats faced by the Harlow Square. I've always regarded the Harlow Square as one of the central kind of anchors of the underground network in the UK, and it's a great shame to hear it's under threat, particularly as it's been nominated for venue, Underground Venue of the Year by the NME. Um, it's, I've played there with Million Dead, I've played there solo. It's uh, one of the, you know, it's a really important venue, it's a really important thing for us to keep alive, and I really hope the Harlow Square continues to live long and prosper. It's the first place where I ever thought that somebody like me, a kid who grew up in a council house in a new town, could be involved in music or could be involved in art in any way. My mum never worried when I was there because it's a place of safety in the town. I got involved with things there, started putting shows on, ended up putting on a really early show by Seymour who later became Blur. I think some of the footage for that may be in this video. Bye. Hi guys, Brendan from Weed is here. Just a short video to let you know that we're um, throwing our support behind the square in Harlow. Uh, small venues like the square are the reason that we're able to tour because when we come over there it costs a fortune and we have to be able to play every day, to work every day. So the square and King Tut's and the Sawmill and all these places, they're really important to us and to bands like us, and I think that they're kind of like the life's blood of the UK music scene, to be honest. So keep your culture, keep your small clubs, and support the square. Thanks. Twenty-four years ago, when British Line first formed the original British Line, this was the first place we ever played. <laughs> and it's good to be back. Um, I hear this place is, uh, is not going to last too much longer, which is, I think is a fucking shame. But... When you meet people that are like-minded, you start a band. For instance, me and Sam met each other downstairs in this building, and now we're in a band. And without this venue, we probably never would have met each other, so our band wouldn't exist. And I'm sure that's the same for a lot of bands in town throughout history. Obviously, there are many reasons why a venue like the Square is such a great asset for a town like Harlow. Um, but I think ultimately, for young kids who are, you know, aspiring to play music and you know, or, or are in bands, it gives them something to work towards and something that a lot of kids in other towns like Harlow don't have, you know. This is John Oda Thomas with Ian McLagan and the Bump Band in Austin, Texas, home. And uh, just extending our support for Harlow Square, letting everybody know how important it is, venues like this, for touring musicians. I know Mac was really proud to play the place, and it's a great crowd, great people, very important venue. And great graffiti in the uh, in the uh, back room, green room, by the way. Um, Adam, we wish you all the best. Please lend your support. Subways, and we need a venue in Harlow because the square in Harlow changed my life forever and I want that to continue for generation after generation after generation. We need to inspire kids, we need to inspire adults, we need to inspire everyone and the way to do that is to have a venue in Harlow. Can I going to stall if you don't keep it going? Get me, 
it's uh, great to be here. It's great that the square is still going, and I've played. Some, I have played some of the toughest gigs of my life in here, where the people of Harlow sat there, folded their arms, and said, "All right, so you're from London, so do something." Then. But, and they waited. They waited hours, but they would applaud a little bit as you came on stage, and then by the time you were on stage, it was silence. It was like you were going to the scaffold. But I like that. I respected them, and I would pummel them until they gave me laughter. And then I went off and played Hollywood Bowl. So there we go. I'm square to Hollywood Bowl from the streets of London. I'm enjoying all that I've seen. From working at the square, I met so many musicians that I went on to work with. Um, through word of mouth, I got to work with um, dozens and dozens of artists musicians, other singers, and eventually joined the band that I'm in now. Um, and we're constantly touring Europe, uh, where they actually value venues like the Square. The support of local music is so important to our culture, to our society, to young people's creativity. To lose something like the Square kind of uh, removes the heart of, of local music. For the past 20 years, live music in pubs has been disappearing. This has had a severe impact on the type of groups that have come to the fore the independence of bands and the health of music and the health of the music industry as a whole. Unfortunately, the square at Harlow is also threatened with closure and it is of particular significance to us because it was the first southern venue at which we played and after which we were immediately signed to the very independent Ouija Records. Sometimes it may be good to see what an event curated by a comedian can offer, but for me it's always been more exciting to have no expectation other than a hope in your heart. The Square at Harlow has provided the ability of new and even more established bands to do just this. We can't be left with just the internet for entertainment. We need live venues and we wish everyone associated with the Square the best in trying to continue their great work that they have done to date. A lot of councils in England um, are run by criminals who just take the money from the people, they take the taxes and put it in their own pockets. And I just hope that Harlow um, isn't, or Essex isn't one of them. Um, but if they let this place go, I mean, it looks like, you know, you've got a criminal council on your hands. Because in Europe, they would never shut this down. They'd buy you a completely new and better place. Um, it's just a shame. And like I said, uh, the councils and the, the people in government don't realise the value of a place like this. Without places like the square, for people that are in a certain subculture, that are into certain types of music, there's nowhere to go. I mean, you don't want to go and hang out in nightclubs with people that you have nothing in common with. And there's an atmosphere that you're not interested in. You want to go somewhere like this. And this is, for Harlow, this is the only one like that, the only venue like that for miles around. And so it's really important that we can continue to have somewhere in the new year where all of these people that are friends with each other and all these people that are interested in the same things can carry on going, hanging out with each other. Basically, if the square is allowed to close and not be replaced, future generations will have no reason to stay in Harlow and it will just become, it will be another step towards it being a dormitory town for Stansted Airport and for the city. And what about people in towns, Colchester or Harlow, where I grew up, what about the people in these towns? 
who like music, where do they go if there's nowhere to go? What's there for them, particularly if they like a certain alternative rock music? Maybe they look slightly different. When I moved to Harlow in the 80s, there was one nightclub, Benny's Nightclub. They had The Cures, Love Cats. It was the only listenable record. Where did everyone else go? If you have a slight uh, a different political opinion or you looked different or you liked a different sort of music, there was one place for them to go. And it was brilliant that it was there because it means people can congregate and share ideas. They might form a band, they might write a fanzine. There were a couple of lads there who became music producers. These days, there are people who can go there and use the decks. It provides uh, a place to rehearse and a place to see a band, but it provides as well a shelter, a meeting place for people. You take that away, and where are these people going to go? The Harlow Square is due to shut on New Year's Eve this year. If that goes, the whole musical community, where do they go? And this is what's important as well about these music venues. <laughs> shed a few tears as the curtain comes down on a story which for us goes back 35 years. In December I'll drive up to Harlow to meet Steve and watch Secret Affair then I'll stay over until the Sunday for my last ever night at the square. My first one was my second gig ever 1980 when it was square one lots of rage but no stage soon they built it and the place became our house of fun a venue a boozer, a refuge, in a town where such places were few. We played music, drank beer, watched our mates play. Soon the touring bands all came there too. It's not pretty, it's black, punk and shabby, and its bits are all falling apart. But we all know what it means to Harlow. Let this not be the end, but the start. When the council gave up, good folk saved it. Now it's time for another campaign. You fought long and fought hard to save this one. A new square must and will rise again. Till the stockbroker, save the square.